I'm Devin Meyer, and today I'm going to talk and teach you about watercolor butterflies. They're really fun, and I'm going to give you some techniques that will make them pretty easy. We're going to learn how to draw our butterflies and then how to paint our butterflies. These are all done with watercolor. Each one of them has a tiny little shadow that makes them look like they pop out of the paper. They don't all have to be um, realistic looking. You can get kind of creative. Here's a butterfly I did that's just a little bit more loose. And here's another butterfly that's um, a little bit more accurate. Okay. Here's one more example. So we're gonna do some drawing and some painting with watercolors. And if you've never done either, don't worry. I'm gonna take you through step by step. But the most important thing I want you to think about today is not being afraid. If you're fearless, then you're gonna learn a lot more. You're gonna try things you might not have tried and you're gonna be able to make mistakes and then look at those and say, they're not really mistakes, they're happy accidents. Um, a happy accident is when you do something and the, it comes out not the way you exactly you expected, but then you can learn. You can say, wow, I liked that, or I'm going to try to avoid that. So the more mistakes you make, actually, the more you're going to learn. You can see here this edge smeared, but I'm okay with that. I think it gave it more of a free form sort of look. Um, yeah, here I made a smudge on my paper. I don't know if you can tell, but I had to kind of carve it out. But I, I think this butterfly was still pretty successful. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna take you through step by step and I just want you to have fun. All right. Okay, let's get started. I have a pencil. I like to use a mechanical pencil, but you can use any kind of pencil. You just don't have to sharpen these as often. And an eraser, of course, in case you make some mistakes, it's nice to have. But we're not going for perfection, we're just going for fun and as accurate as we can. So we know that a butterfly, I've decided to use this one for my example, is symmetrical. And that's one of the hardest parts of getting your butterfly accurate, is that symmetry. So we're going to start by drawing a vertical line. And this will be, this will help us keep it centered. Okay, so I'm going to draw that vertical line. Now, I want this side to be as long as this side. So I'm going to guess one side about that long. I'm going to draw mine a little bit dark so you can see it. Now I want to make sure this side is the same length as this side. So the way I can do that is I can take my pencil and use it as a measuring device. So I'm going to put the tip of my pencil on the end of the line, and then my fingernail where the line ends. So now I have an idea about where it would end, about right here. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way out to there. And let's check that. So I'm going to see this side is about that long. So this side, oh, I made it a little bit too big. So I'm going to just check that. Okay. So now I have a baseline that'll help me be more accurate. So now I wanna draw this angle. We're gonna draw a general shape of the butterfly. We're not gonna go right into the detail. We're gonna start general and get more and more specific. So I'm gonna draw an angle about the angle I think those wings are at, all the way to my center line. Now I know my butterfly isn't a triangle, but it's a good start to getting the shape accurate. All right, so I have a fairly symmetrical triangle. But see here, he doesn't come down to a point, so I'm gonna cut that off. We're almost like sculptors that are starting, we, have, we start with a general shape and we're gonna chip away slowly, slowly till we get the shape we want. Okay, now that we've got the general kind of shape of this butterfly, we're gonna start getting in more detail. So I'm gonna draw a little, some marks that help me think about where the body is. Don't make the body too fat. It's thinner than you think. So I'm going to make two little marks. That seems about the width of the body. The next important monument or thing to draw is where the wings meet. And sometimes you can't tell. Like right here, you can't really see where the wings meet, but you can always tell with this little V. Most butterflies have this little mark in there. So I can see that the angle is something like this. It's not too sharp. So I'll draw that on this side. Okay, so now I know where the wings meet. 
So I'm going to draw a little V right here, and that will help me to remember that that's where those two wings meet. Okay, now I'm going to draw in a, a little head. All butterflies have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Okay, it's not super exact, but I, I'm st starting to mark where I want these things to be. Now, I want to see if the head is below the top of the wings. This one, it obviously is. Sometimes it's not. See this one? The head is above the top of the wings. So since I see it's way below, I'm going to draw these angled lines. So from the thorax, I'm going to come way up. Okay. I went above these guidelines, but these guidelines are there just to guide me, okay? So you don't, you don't have to follow them exactly. They're just to help you keep things um, contained. So now I'm going to come over here, and I see that the end of the wing has a, a beautiful curve. So I'm going to make a curve right here. And now let's look at the bottom. See how it comes up in a little V? I'll draw that little V in. I also see that his, his body goes way down. I'm going to draw that little V. Okay, and then see here, it's got a nice curve. I'm going to draw that nice curve. And I'll draw the same curve over here. There you have it. A pretty symmetrical butterfly. So at this point, you'd want to erase some of your guidelines. Um, like this, you won't need. And these lines you don't need. Um, and you want to clean up your design. Okay. So I erased the marks that I didn't want, and I cleaned up the design. I made these curves a little bit more curvy. And now let's add a little bit of detail. For this butterfly, we're not going to go too much into like all these little white patterns. Later on, you can. So I'm just going to general look at the shape and mark that in. So I see I have a black area here and a black area that goes all the way down to here like this. And then another black area here and here. And also, notice this black. Let's draw that in too. So I'm just giving myself some guidelines for when I paint. Okay, and then we've got the little antenna. Now, I'm going to keep my pencil lines kind of dark, but you'll want to erase your pencil lines so you can barely see them because once you paint on a pencil, it gets sealed in. I think we're ready to start painting. All right. So I have two brushes. I have a tiny one that I can do really thin lines and this fat one that has a nice sharp point. This is called the belly and I like them to have like a round belly because they'll hold a lot of water. I have two glasses of water that I use, one to just clean the paintbrush and another one to wet it. And then this is my palette. So let's, let's move over here. So these are my paints. You can use any kind of watercolor. You can get a little kit at the drugstore, um, but what you need is an area to mix your paint. This is the most important part because watercolors need to be reconstituted. I also usually have a little paper towel around to just dab up excess water. So for my butterfly, I'm gonna get my brush wet and I'm gonna make a nice puddle of blue. So I would get my brush really wet and stir that up. These paints are dry, just like any kind of watercolor tablet paints. And once you stir them with a lot of water, they'll reconstitute. So then I'm gonna make a puddle. And I want this puddle to be pretty juicy. So I'm gonna, I dipped my brush into the water and I'm gonna add some more water. If it's not wet enough, the paint will be scratchy. And if it's too wet, let me show you, it'll be pretty transparent. Now, sometimes you might want a really light, light color, but sometimes you want an intense color. So try to get the balance right. This will take some practice. So I think for my first layer, I'm gonna use this light, light blue, all right? But if we look at our butterfly over here, you can see that there's some beautiful dark blue that comes in and see how it's a nice blurry edge? That's called wet into wet. So that means when you add watercolor to watercolor, they'll kind of blur. So I have my light blue. Now I'm going to make a puddle over here of dark blue. So I'm going to, I have a darker blue right here. If you don't have two kinds of blue, you can just use a really light version of your first blue and then a more intense version for the second blue. So there. Now I have my light blue and my dark blue. So let's get started. 
I'm going to draw, I'm going to paint in all the light blue area. Oops, let me show you, all this light blue area, okay? So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna just paint this all in. And when it's still shiny and wet, I'm gonna drop in some dark blue and we'll see what happens. It, it's called bleed. So let me get some dark blue. I'm gonna put that in. Notice how I'm just dabbing it in. I'm kind of just dropping it in there. I don't wanna mess with it too much. I wanna let it do its own thing. Okay, see how it's kind of blending outward? That's what watercolor does. If, if watercolor goes into wet paint, it'll bleed out. See here, it's kind of dry. I'm gonna add some water right there and then it will blend. That's called wet into wet. All right, so you'll start to see some beautiful things happening with watercolor. Like right here, that's called a blossom. That's when the paint sort of does its own thing. This can be frustrating or you can see it as a happy accident. Remember, we're not going for perfect. Things in nature aren't perfect. You just want to use the watercolors and let them do their own things. So now I want to talk about black and white. Black can be, you can pick it out of your palette. Um, I have some black in my palette, yeah. But you can also mix blue and brown. So I'm gonna take some blue and then I'm gonna take some brown. And that makes a nice rich black too. So you can either use black straight from your palette or mix your own. Now with watercolors, white, um, white has to be the paper. So you have to leave little speckles if you want the white to show. So let's start, I'm gonna start here. Actually, I think I'm gonna get my thinner brush for this little part. So I'm gonna get my thin brush. I always like to get my brush wet. And I'm gonna get some black and I'm gonna just do this little border right here. Now, this is still a little wet, so that black is gonna bleed a little bit into the blue. Okay, let's get all the way down into here. Uh, I think I'll come up here a little bit too. All right, so now I wanna do this edge and see how there's um, white on the edge. I think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do it super accurate. I'm gonna use my big brush. And what I'm gonna do is just leave some little specks out and those will be the little white dots. See, I'm kind of circling around where the white is. That's how you can get white with a watercolor. So let's do that again over here. So I'm kind of outlining it and I'm gonna leave some specks. Of white, there you go. And then at the bottom, I'm going to do the same. So uh, kind of outline around where I want it to be white. Okay, so just adding a little bit more black and adding some specks of white. All right, so that's starting to shape up to look kind of nice. So now I'm going to draw its body. Um, I think I'll make the body a little bit brown. So I'm mixing up some brown over here and I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna put too much detail into the body. I just want it to kind of imply the body. Now, my paint is still a little wet, so it's a little bit blurry, but that's okay. All right, and I'm gonna use my skinny, skinny brush and make some antennas. If you want, you could use a pen if you, if you feel like you don't have a steady enough hand with a brush, um, that will be fine. So that head popped out a little bit more than I wanted, but I'm going to consider that one of my happy accidents. Okay, so I've got wet into wet. I've got this dry, nice hard edge. Look over here. My paint was still a little wet, so I got a softer edge right here. Um, that's okay, too. It's watercolor. So I think I'm going to show the border between the two wings. So I have one more tip that makes your watercolor look really well, really nice. Um, but first, I see right here, it's a little much. So I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm just gonna dab it. If I scrub it, it'll take up too much, but I'm just gonna kind of dab that body. Okay, it wound up taking up a little bit more than I wanted. So let's see. See how I pushed on it and now it's gotten kind of strong off. So I'm gonna add some more. Okay, let's let that dry and see what happens. One thing I found with butterflies that make, make them really pop is I add a little tiny shadow as if they're just floating on the page. 
So I usually make the shadow with purple. I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna make a little pile of blue right here. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush and add some red and red and blue make a really pretty purple. Let's see, it's a little reddish. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. I had some blue right there, I think I'll use it. Then I look at my butterfly and I think, where would a shadow be? So I'm gonna make a little shadow right along this edge. Now my butterfly should be pretty dry or that purple will bleed into the butterfly. Okay, so it's a little strong. So again, I'm gonna to try to take out some paint. Another trick to not erase, but correct watercolor is if you get this jagged edge of your paper towel, it'll kind of soak it up better without blotting it too much. So you take that, those little tiny whiskers that you get when you rip your paper towel, and it's like a capillary action. It'll suck up some extra paint, All right? So I could take this butterfly and I could add a background, or I could just leave it white, or I could maybe splatter something on it, um, and then I could cut it out and make a card out of it. Okay, so we learned how to draw a butterfly, how to make it symmetrical. We learned how to mix our colors and how to get wet into wet, and then wait for the paint to dry so that you can go over the top and make a sharp line. Then we painted a butterfly. I cut mine out and put it on this card. So these butterflies, it's just a simple piece of paper that I glued the butterfly to. These would make a nice gift for a friend or maybe just to put around your house to um, make you feel happy. Uh, butterflies are really fun. There's so many. You can look online for all kinds of photos of butterflies or just in your backyard and just explore, have fun. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because mistakes are always just happy accidents that we can learn from. Hope you enjoyed this and keep painting.